So I'm sharing my screen now. So you can see my screen. I can see my presentation. Yeah. Okay. So hello everyone. Today I'm going to present a review about the seismic behavior of non-liquefiable and liquefiable soil. So let's start with the history of, of liquefaction. After Niigata earthquake on June 16, 1964, severe damaging to many structures were observed, especially for structure in the top of saturated loose deposits. So after Niigata earthquake, the devastating effect brought the attention of researchers to liquefiable, liquefaction phenomena. Let's see what is liquefaction phenomena. When we have a structure, and this structure is situated on the top of loose sand soil, and there is a level of the water in the ground. So during the earthquake, the water start to propagate up to this level, and the effective strength start to decrease because of the excess poor water pressure, and then the structure start to settle. There are different damaging can be observed due to liquefaction phenomena. One of the major observation is the structure start to tilt without any structure uh, problem. As we can see after Niigata earthquake, the structure here is intact structurally and the concrete is perfect. However, the structure loses its, uh, its serviceability after it uh, tilted to its side. One of the other damaging of the liquefaction after after the earthquake, the structure start to. After the earthquake, one of the major observation is soil boiling, where the sand start to boil, like like as we can see, and there will be a problem with the ground. So, how can we mitigate the problems of liquefaction, if we have building? So, as I mentioned, the excess pore water pressure start to raise and that ex expose the layer to liquefaction and the soil start to lose its shear strength. One of the solution is using shallow foundation, but the problem with the shallow foundation, it will transfer the loot to the liquefiable layer, which will expose the foundation and the building to a significant settlement due to liquefaction. So if we have a building, as we can see, and we this building is located uh, in the top of the ground, and we have a water level, and this water level is in, uh, is in la the loose sand layer. So during the earthquake, the water start to propagate and this structure will settle. So what is the main solution for, for the problem? It's by transferring the loot from the weak layer to the strong layer. We can do this through piles. So if we started to transfer the loot of the pile to the, uh, to the strong layer, now we can get, uh, mitigate some of the problem of the liquefaction. So, in order to study this, we have to understand the behavior of the liquefiable soil in order to mitigate it. So the behavior and the expected failure mechanism due to liquefaction depend in several factors. So in order to know the factors that affect liquefaction, one of the most important factor is the ground motion intensity and also its duration because liquefaction is depend on the number of big cycles of acceleration which triggers the liquefaction phenomena. Also, the Loose sand relative density is one of the main factors that trigger liquefaction because if the sand is loose, that make it more susceptible to liquefy. However, if the sand is dense and the, there is a minimum uh, voids ratio between the particles, that decrease the liquefaction phenomena. Also, the drainage condition, if there is a drainage condition up and down the sand, that makes it more uh, less susceptible for liquefaction because the water can escape. It will not start to raise. The, the other thing is the bile group configuration, the spacing between the bile and the diameter of piles. And we already just published a paper uh, uh, mentioning that if the bile uh, the change of the bile diameter affect the triggering of liquefaction, even if the in the dense sand. So, how can we assess the liquefaction phenomena? Enormous research has been conducted to assess the bile response through physical modeling, numerical modeling, and pseudostatic approach. The one kind of the physical modeling is the shaking tables test, where we can simulate the bile group and the bile 
either the bile individually or the bile group in theory of shaking table test where we can expose the structure and the foundation to different situations such as stratification of soil and the ground also can be inclined to expose it to a different phenomena called lateral spreading as we're going to mention it later and also we can locate the water table at different depths also we can expose this shaking table to different intensities of shaking and also in different direction either in double direction or we also can expose the shaking table to a vertical uh, acceleration the other kind of physical modeling is a centrifuge test centrifuge test is very important techniques to simulate the soil bile structure interaction in order to collect data we can use it later uh, for numerical modeling as we can see as we can see later we have the foundation here with the bile and we can see that the foundation uh, sorry the soil is stratified into multiple layer it can be also inclined and we can use different g's to expose the uh, the, uh, the foundation to uh, more realistic situations so why do we use physical modeling? Physical modeling is very important technique that we can use it to collect a lot of data, enormous amount of information, that we can use this information to understand the behavior of the soil bile structure interaction. But these experiments are so expensive. So in order to understand the response and to as, like to study different parameter we can use numerical modeling numerical modeling the advantage of the numerical modeling once we calibrate and validate one of the physical modeling we can use the numerical modeling to simulate the soil bile structure interaction and we can measure different parameters and different things that we couldn't obtain from the physical modeling easily we can measure them in the finite element and uh, in the modeling and uh, numerical modeling analysis one of the techniques that uh, we can use in the numerical modeling is a finite element analysis where we can si simulate the whole problem with the different boundary condition and we can measure the lateral displacement and the vertical displacement and the straining action in the vial and other uh, other measurements that we can obtain also the advantage of the numerical modeling that we can conduct a parametric study to study the variability of different parameters such as the soil parameters or the structure element or strength the problem with this with the finite element analysis or the numerical modeling in general is uh, that we can describe it as it's uh, an expensive computational because how much can you imagine the cost for a finite element analysis and how much expertise it's required in order to be uh, in order to be able to simulate uh, a problem with the right boundary condition and how much is the time that you need to simulate this problem that's why because of uh, because of the complication of the numerical modeling scientists and researchers started to uh, to relate this to simplified approach. Our simplified approach can be something like PIM on nonlinear Winkler foundation, where we can simulate the bile as 1D element and the soil as a spring with BY. And depending on the code you are using, you can simulate your problem. Also, if we are, if, if the bile is located in a saturated situation, we can. Uh, reduce the parameter or the stiffness of the soil to in order to account for liquefaction one of the other techniques for the pseudostatic approach is called elastic beam theory where we can simulate the pile as 1d element like a column in the soil and the part where the soil is unsupported laterally because of liquefaction because we know that if the soil started to lose its strength because of liquefaction the bile start to lose the lateral support like now it's become like a column which is not supported laterally so scientists start to relate this uh, as depending on this approach of uh, column with no support laterally to simulate the bile in the li liquefiable soil and depending on the elastic uh, equation we can calculate the straining action such as the bending moment and also we can calculate the deflection of the bile 
So lateral failure of the bile. There are, in order, before we start this, there are three main failures of the bile in liquefiable soil. First thing is the lateral failure response and the vertical failure response and the buckling failure. We will start now with the lateral failure of the bile. The reduction in the effective stress caused deterioration in the lateral subgrade reaction. We know this is because the reduction in the effective strength. So if we have this curve, which is a very famous curve, we, with the increase of the excess pore water pressure, as we can see that the strength and the stiffness of the soil start to decrease tremendously, which is very important to notice because that's how we're going to design our pile. Also, the theory or the chronological approach of the propagation of the motion is like this. At the beginning, when the, when the motion starts to blow or hit at a specific area, the, the inertia force comes from the weight of the bile cap itself and the structure uh, over the bile cap will start to cause bending moment and deformation on the bile. That's not the most dangerous thing because once the soil uh, start to approach liquefaction, the, liqu the bending moment and the deflection will start to increase tremendously. And this will start to exaggerate when we reach, when we reach to the soil or if the ground is, uh, is inclined because this will, uh, 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 this will expose the pile to a phenomena called lateral spreading which will induce more bending moment and deformation on the pile. We know, we have to understand also by the end of the motion, that doesn't mean that the, the, the soil start uh, stop to move because there will be a residual, a residual ground displacement after the earthquake. So there will be some bending moment and some deformation by the end of the motion. Also, the lateral spreading, we can, there is a lot of research has been done on the lateral uh, response of the bile in liquefiable soil during the earthquake. So in order to summary the response of, uh, or the lateral response of the bile, we say that the bile lateral resistance deteriorate with the reduction of the relative density. As we can see with the, with the decrease of the relative density of the soil, the stiffness of the soil also start to decrease, which expose the bile to more uh, or higher straining action. The higher ground motion, which act as a kinematic force, causes increase in the bile bending moment through the liquefiable layer, especially at the intersection between the layer. So a lot of research has studied where we can find the maximum uh, bending moment. And they found that the, inter uh, the intersection between the layers, this is the place where we can find the maximum moment because of the different and the stiffness of the soil. Also, the coupling between the kinematic force from the uh, from the ground motion with the inertia force from the superstructure mass that complicates the issue more, which make it the behavior more complicated and expose the bile to a significant pending moment. The existence of the clay layer as uh, as a crust on the top of the liquefiable layer that exposes the, the whole response to be more uh, dangerous because the clay causes uh, more lateral pressure on the on the bile and that exposes it to a higher moment. Also, the existence of the clay, as we mentioned before, that the drainage condition is one of the most important factors that can trigger liquefaction. So the existence of the clay as a non-liquefiable material can accelerate and exaggerate the situation of the liquefaction. Finally, if the ground is sloped, we will witness another, uh, beha another behavior which is called lateral spreading, and this will expose the pile to higher displacement and a higher bending moment. For, for decades, researcher has been concerned with studying the lateral response of the bile, as it's one of the most important and most dangerous things that can expose the bile to failure. Until recently, when the researcher started to find that other failure mechanism can be observed after the earthquakes. So they started to relate this failure to the loss of the bearing capacity of the bile in the liquefiable soil when the soil start to reach liquefaction. 
So the axial capacity of the bile has been well established in static cases and the dynamic axial response recently uh, concerning the researchers since a lot of failure cases were related to the bearing capacity failure. During the earthquake, the excess pool water pressure reduced the effective strength, then the soil uh, shear strength also is reduced. Therefore, the bile shaft resistance decreases and reach zero with excess pool water pressure ratio of one. So when the, bile, when the soil reaches liquefaction state, that means at this moment, the effective strength reaching zero. And if we look at the static equation of the bearing capacity, we will find that the friction resistance of the bile is a, fact, uh, is, uh, is a function of the effective strength. So if the effective stress reaches zero, that means that the shear strength or the shaft friction of the bile will deteriorate. So as we can see with the increase of the pool water pressure, there will be an increase in the shaft resistance, which I will explain why this increase at this time in a while. And then this will, when the bile, uh, when the soil start uh, to reach liquefaction with the excess pool water pressure reaching one, that means that the, the shaft uh, friction will deteriorate and it will reach zero. So, in order to understand why the shaft friction has increased even more the static, uh, static condition, that will be because of this. During the built up of the poor water pressure, the bile will start to settle because the bile uh, need to uh, mobilize its bearing capacity. At the time when the bile is settling to mobilize the end bearing capacity, at this moment, there will be like and increase in the shaft resistance to make up this reduction. In order to understand what's happening, but before I mention this, there are different conditions for the end bearing capacity. The end bearing capacity can decrease or can increase. The end bearing capacity can increase if the ground, if the bile cap, if the bile cap itself is situated on the ground level. But if the bile cap is above the ground level, we will not notice that the bile will maintain settling and it will always lose the bearing capacity. In order to understand the increase of the shaft resistance during the reduction of the bearing capacity, uh, that will be because of this. We have to know that the excess bore water pressure start to decrease when we are closer to the bile because at the bile, because of the vibration of the bile, the, there will be a gap. This gap will cause dissipation of the excess pore water pressure, which will cause reduction in the excess pore water pressure ratio. If we looked here closely at the excess pore water pressure before it reached the ratio of one, we will find there are moments when the excess poor water pressure start to reduce. At this moment, if we look at the curve at the same time for the shaft friction, these are the times when we retrieve some of the shaft friction. So we witness positive shaft friction during the propagation of the excess poor water pressure before we reach liquefaction state. But when the when the excess pore water pressure reach the ratio of one, the shaft friction will reach to zero. The last kind of failure, sorry, is the last kind. Oh, we still have some slides about the bearing capacity. So in order to assess the bearing capacity failure, there are some equations here. One of the main equation to calculate the end bearing capacity in the liquefiable soil, we can see that Depending on the depending on the uh, bearing capacity in the static cases, and depending on the excess pore water pressure and the initial effective stress and the friction angle, we can calculate the end bearing capacity in the liquefiable soil. So you can calculate the end bearing capacity from your static uh, equations, and you can calculate the excess pore water pressure from the free field analysis. Uh, there are a lot of softwares we can talk about them in a while and you can calculate the effective strength and you already have your friction angle. So you can calculate the end bearing uh, capacity uh, for liquefaction state. Also, uh, there are uh, equation which depend on the 
settlement uh, doesn't increase than 10% of the bile diameter. So we can calculate the factor of safety depending on the uh, excess pore water pressure ratio as well. As we can see until now uh, that the excess pore water pressure ratio is one of the important measurements that you have to understand and you have to measure in order to assess the capacity and to control the failure of the bile. The last failure mechanism we are going to discuss today is the bile buckling failure. Short columns usually fail in crushing, while long columns fail in buckling. And our bile, when it's located in uh, liquefiable soil, at this time, the, the, the soil is, uh, is not giving lateral support to the bile. That means the bile can act as a long column. Depending on the bile flexure rigidity, the kinematic force results in bending moment in the bile from the free field motion. And the superstructure generates an inertia force when it is foliate, which is translated as a lateral force and the bending moment on the cap. The expo that, ex that expose the bile to more axial load and lateral load causing additional bending moment. Let's think about what's going on. If we have a bile and this bile has an axial force at its top. So when the earthquake comes, it will start to move the bile laterally, especially at the top. So what happened to the axial bile at the top? It will, be, it will, not, be, it will not be at the center of the, uh, of the bile now. So there will be an eccentricity. So with more axial load, that will cause more, uh, with more uh, bending moment on the bile, which will cause eventually, uh, if this axial load is large, that will initiate plastic uh, yielding and we can see plastic hinge in the, uh, in the bile. So how can we design against buckling? Some research has been conducted to study the buckling behavior of the bile in liquefiable soil. And they started to give us a guideline that we can use in order to, uh, in order to simulate or in order to choose the right length and the right diameter of the bile in liquefiable soil. They depended on the earlier effective length. As we can see this from our undergrad study that when we were studying buckling, we can see depending on the length of the bile in the liquefiable uh, uh, layer, we can calculate the effective length of the bile. Also, the study is started to give us some recommendation for the length of the bile and, and how can we control the factor of safety of the buckling. The lateral load caused lateral deflection. We already know this by now, which is amplified due to the axial uh, force. So when we have an axial force and the bile is moving laterally, it will be amplified because of this axial force. So they started to calculate a ratio between the, uh, the, uh, uh, the amplified one and the original one. And they refer to it as a buckling uh, amplification factor. Also, as we can see here in this graph, we can see depending on the axial load and the buckling load, we can calculate we can, we can uh, draw this uh, graph between the buckling amplification factor and the, uh, uh, and the axial load and the allowable buckling load or allowable axial buckling load. And depending, as we can see, if the axial load increases until it reaches one by the increase, we can see that the buckling amplification factor also increase until it reaches to higher factor. Also, in order to design against the buckling, uh, the research gave us a guideline to choose the bile length by drawing the, the graph of the allowable load and the graph of the buckling where uh, the buckling load, the intersection between the buckling load and the allowable axial load will give us the perfect or the ideal uh, bile length. So now we already calculated the bile length. In order to design against the diameter of the bile, that will depend on the thickness of the liquefiable layer and also on the material of the bile. If the bile is concrete or steel tubular bile, and we already know the thickness of the liquefiable layer, you can calculate the diameter of the bile. Thank you and I would be happy to receive any question.
thank you, Engineer Ahmed, for this presentation. We are waiting for any questions for Engineer Ahmed. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. Um, so from the research, which is really interesting, it's a very good subject. Um, so you mentioned that uh, if we use finite element, it will be uh, expensive computationally. Um, yes. I agree with you. I agree with you with that. However, in case if we are going to use it, so what are the objectives are going to be for the um, for the analysis and what are the variables if we are going to conduct a, par a parametric study? Is it going to be the bearing factor of safety buckling, and the parameters will be pile length, diameter, distance? Okay. I agree with you that the using of finite element can be computationally expensive, but that doesn't mean that it can't be obtained. There are di like different softwares that we can use them, which is they are free. One of the most important software that we can use for the soil bile structure interaction, which is during the earthquake is OpenSeas. OpenSeas is an open source that we can use it fairly, but one of the issue of the OpenSeas is it doesn't have a graphic user interface. So all your code or, or, or your uh, model will be some kind of script. And in order to be able to simulate your problem, you have to write your model and the output will be some kind of funky. It's just like some, um, some like text files and text files some have uh, some numbers inside. Yeah. In order to be able to visualize your results, it will require some post processing software. There are different uh, kind of software for this, such as Guide or Sterco. But uh, at the same time, you can conduct your parametric study and you can have the control over your, your model with, uh, with no problem. But there are other software which can be very expensive and the computational would take a long time and it requires uh, like uh, a very rigorous uh, so, uh, uh, computers. So yeah. one of these uh, software such as Midas GTS NX, this is one of the models that I have uh, been um, modeling for a client a while ago. And yes. he was interested in simulating the response of the soil bile structure interaction uh, in, liquefiable, in liquefiable soil. Uh, yeah. In order to understand uh, what's going on with the, with, the, with the model, there are different, different boundary conditions that we have to include in this model. Uh, I was about to discuss this model, but I was a uh, run of time. But if yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the main parameters, it's so, it's so straightforward. You just create your geometry, you bought your uh, bile and you bought your interface. But what is important in the soil bile structure interaction, in the dynamic analysis, is if you have a load on the top of the foundation, you have to transfer this load into mass because uh, yes. During the earthquake, we use masses. Also, you have to include a free field, uh, like a layer, uh, uh, like a boundary condition to simulate that the extension of the soil from different uh, side, which will, uh, it can be done with different techniques in Midas, GTS, and X. Uh, uh, also, uh, you have to include in the boundary, uh, in the boundary condition, uh, uh, like um, fixed uh, base. Uh, and also in the analysis, you have to perform your eigen uh, value, uh, eigen analysis in order to conduct, uh, to obtain the most uh, like the critical uh, frequencies or the time. And if yeah. we went to the nonlinear analysis here, we will find that it's important to go to analysis control uh, and to define uh, the K node condition uh, for the in situ uh, uh, stresses. And also in the dynamic part, you have to account for the Rayleigh damping. So you have to include the frequency and you have to include the damping ratio and you have to account for this damping ratio in all uh, layers. And some other like some other techniques in, in, in the model. That's why uh, finite element analysis, it requires an extensive knowledge of what's going on in order to do it. And if I went to OpenSeas, for example, and I'm simulating, uh, uh, simulating a shaking table, I will find that 
I can't use GTS in X in this problem. However, I have to use either Abacus or to use OpenSeas, which are more, uh, more complicated than my DAS GTS and X, because I have to assign some kind of boundary condition called tie boundary condition, which is not exist in my DAS GTS, uh, GTS and X, which makes the complication as a computation is more complicated. So if I don't understand what's going on between the different softwares, it's easier to go for the pseudo-static approach to give me a straightforward uh, answer. And most of the geotechnical engineers prefer this kind of analysis because it's, it's simple. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank okay. you. There is another question from Omar Mahdi. How can a PY method account for the liquefaction in the pile modeling? Okay, Omar. And if we went back to the presentation. Like that's a really a big, uh, a big topic. But if we went back here, uh, you already can like, uh, like the BY, the BY curve is considered or represent or show us the stiffness of the soil. So you can reduce the stiffness of the soil if you want to throw the equation of the BY curve, uh, you will find that there are uh, factors that um, uh, that's attached with the excess pore water pressure ratio. Uh, and if you use the excess pore water pressure ratio from the free field analysis, you can reduce uh, the, this factor in the BY curve and in simulation, you use the reduced value. So you can uh, use it for the analysis. In order to do this, you have first to account for the, you have to first to use to account for the, uh, the sorry, you have to calculate first the, the free field analysis. So you have to calculate the excess pore water pressure ratio. Then I already like have a code here like I can uh, just open it for a second. Um, just give me one second. So this is this is a code. Uh, this is a code that I developed uh, for uh, for liquefaction. So where you can just assign your parameter of the curve here and you start to reduce it, like you will find in this calculation, there will be values that can be reduced. So one of the other, uh, this is one of the techniques that if you are writing your code, but if you are simulating this using a software like OpenSeas, you will find that one of the template of the, uh, of the material, it's called, uh, BY symbol and BY liquefiable. What is the difference between both in order to make it easy to understand? The BY symbol, it's, uh, it goes with the specific equations from the different uh, codes. And for the like ABI uh, or, or like uh, Bench, Bench Hansen or, or a different like or different researcher has conducted a lot of research related to the BY curve. But if you want to other soft like the software and you decided to choose the BY curve, what is uh, liquefiable? So what is happening in this uh, category? It uses the same equation exactly, but in order to account for liquefaction, you have to obtain the result from free field analysis, where the excess pore water you can obtain the pore water pressure. Uh, and also you can obtain the effective st uh, stress because it decreased because of the excess pore water pressure. Using this excess pore water, re re reduced excess pore water pressure and the, uh, that will enable you to calculate the uh, BY curve. So all what happening is in this, in, in here, you account for calculating the uh, strength of the soil, but in the uh, liquefiable uh, calculation, you account for the effective uh, stress, which is reduced because of the excess pore water pressure.
Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Ahmed. Any Next. questions as for an engineer, Ahmed? Okay. Thank you, Ahmed. Thanks, Abdul. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and Ramadan Karim. Thank you. The third topic for today was supposed to be the case studies and the geotechnical challenges presented by Engineer Mohammed Asim, but Engineer Mohammed Asim apologized that, uh, that he have an exam today. So we'll talk about the fourth topic, which is the performance of the passive loaded piles.